everyone. Thank you for joining me today in Success Made Simple, where we're talking about the five keys to preparing your company or organization for growth. Do you know, as we start out, at least as entrepreneurs, we hire people that might be friends, maybe family members, people that also can do multiple things to help us get going. And that's a good thing because as entrepreneurs, we want to be very good stewards of our money. And most of us don't have the ability to start a company and hire a team of 10. That is a special uh, specialty people in areas we just don't have the cash flow. So what we do is we start out mostly doing things all ourselves. Then we might bring in a friend or family member or somebody that is a key person that can handle multiple things so that we can stay on task as the entrepreneur and the leader with what's most important. But here's something that happens and I've seen it over and over in organizations. The people that work with a company at the beginning that maybe have multiple areas that they can dabble in or they can help out in are most often not the same people or at least they might be the same person but not in the same position as they were when the company was starting out or very small. The expertise level often goes up, or it might be people like us that are multitaskers, but once we get as the entrepreneur beyond that focus, we don't think at a deep level in the very topics that we might need expertise in. Do you know, as entrepreneurs and as people, we can only do so many things. And I'll tell you what, I'm one of the best multitaskers that there is. I'm convinced of it. But if I have um, part of my job, for example, is doing the accounting, which it definitely was when I was starting out my business, as I grow, I need to have a more sophisticated level of accounting, somebody that's really on it with those receipts. And you know what? That's just not me. So as I look down the road and as you look down the road for your company preparing for growth, One of the things I like to ask you to do and one of the keys to preparing for that growth is what I like to call a leadership check. Let me explain that to you. If your current business organization or company is committed to making a change, your leaders are the ones that you'll be uh, depending on to make that happen. Lead the changes from the top and help your leaders make the adjustment if they are capable and willing, and you can start by asking them a few questions. Most of us don't really care for change. However, if we've got that strong vision and we explain that to people, people can get along with that vision. They can get on board and passionate about it, and that helps them to be able to manage change. I was working with an organization recently where they had a person that was with them for years, did a great job, but liked to have his hands in absolutely everything. It got to the point that he was working almost 20 hours a day. He was up at night answering emails at all sorts of hours because he didn't want to let go of any of that responsibility. And the organization had grown beyond his capacity or ability to handle everything in a normal eight hour day. Can I tell you, if you're in that position or if you've got people in your organization that are in that position, that is a train wreck waiting to happen if you are planning to continue to grow your organization, but don't make changes with those people in those positions. So here are three things that I want you to ask yourself about leadership, doing this leadership check as you prepare your company for growth. Number one, what has been your reward measurement? For example, if you are a bank, do you reward your employees for operational excellence only? That was something that we started out with in the bank. We focused on operations and we knew as a startup for mergers in five years, we had to start there. But one day we decided that we were going to move from just being operationally sound, which was necessary for the foundation, to preparing the company for growth. 
Can I tell you our reward system had to change? It had to incentivize people to talk about new products and services, to provide referrals to other departments. That was a change for many employees. And the truth of the matter is, many people did not make it. But some people did because they saw the vision and they wanted to grow with the organization. So what are you rewarding? Because whatever you reward is the behavior that you are going to get from your employees and the people that are around you. Number two, when you do performance reviews, what are the items you list to measure performance? Let me give you an example. We'll just continue with the banking example. If I was solely um, performance measuring or giving somebody on their performance review a good rating or a poor rating based solely on the over in shorts in their drawer, which uh, if you're not a teller, you're probably like, what are you talking about? When you work with a cash drawer, you don't want to be over in your drawer and you don't want to be short in your drawer. You want it to balance, which makes sense, right? But there, people are human. There's a lot of transactions. And so sometimes there are some variances in what we call overs and shorts. Now, if it's hundreds of dollars and it happens frequently, that's not going to be good. But if it's a few cents here and there, that's within a margin of error. But back to my point, if I am working with a teller and I do their performance review and the only thing I'm rating them on are operational items like overs and shorts, they are going to do everything they can and focus all their energy in that area. But if I tell them we want to grow as an organization, I want you to do referrals. I want to see more customers. I want you to pick up the phone and, you know, uh, share with people our CD specials or whatever that might be. But I don't actually take what those activities and actions are and put them into a performance review measurement. I will never get that person to be able to focus on the activities that bring growth. So look at how you're measuring performance, look at how you are giving people raises and make sure that you have listed out the activities and actions that facilitate growth in their performance reviews. And I assure you, you will see a dramatic change in the focus of the people that are working for and with you. Number three, are these items consistent with growth? This is where strategic planning comes into play. In my Ignite series, I've got um, Ignite Your uh, Vision, Ignite Your Marketing, and the third module is called Ignite Your Results. That third module is something I have not taught on a lot, but I'm going to begin to share more about because it's really that level of making sure that your strategies and activities and expectations, even job descriptions of every employee line up with the growth that you are committing to wanting to achieve. So thank you so much for joining me on Success Made Simple. We'll see you next time as we continue with the five keys to prepare your company or organization for growth.